because we're actually going to go live uh, across to Singapore um, and go to the Institute of Materials, where Janaki Shanmugam is going to join us uh, from Singapore and the Institute of Materials that's over there. And uh, it's about eight o'clock in the evening there, which is also why we need to make sure we stay on time because uh, Janaki will want to get to bed at some point, uh, but she's very kindly stayed on in the facility. And we're kind of continuing with the theme because uh, she's at IMRI, which is the Institute of Materials Research and Engineering over in Singapore. So they also do a lot of materials research and surface analysis and so forth. So uh, using equipment a little bit like we've just seen and some other forms of vacuum surface analysis. So um, uh, very warm welcome, nice to see you. And uh, thank you for sharing some of the work that's going on over in Southeast Asia. Thank you, Adrian, for the very kind introduction. Um, I'm actually back at home, so it's gonna be a virtual <laughs> <Yeah>. lab tour. <laughs> Well, before I get into the facilities at IMRI, I thought I would um, introduce the parent agency. So I, I work as a scientist at the Institute of Materials Research and Engineering, uh, or IMRE, and we fall under the parent agency of um, science, technology and research. You can see the logo there, it's A star, right? So just a brief um, background into Singapore. We uh, a very small island at the tip of the Malayan Peninsula, um, but pretty dense population. And we thrive on a knowledge economy, basically. So we've, I, I'm sure you, you're aware of um, Singapore's reputation globally. Our research ecosystem, so that's the map of Singapore that you see right here. You can see a concentration right in the center and that's where A-STAR's main campuses are located right in the middle um, and this area called One North because Singapore is uh, geographically located about one to two degrees north of the equator so we have the name One North and that's where we are um, more precisely at Fusionopolis and as the lead government um, agency with that um, one moment just move this around okay yeah so as the lead government agency for um, economic oriented R&D, we, yes. So we, we try and bridge the gap between academia and industry in terms of research and development and our research creates economic growth and jobs for Singapore. So in ASTAR itself, we are organized into two main research councils focusing on the biomedical sciences and the science and engineering um, research council, yes. And we have about 30 to 40 research institutes and we have horizontal programs spanning across these um, research domains, as you see over here. So we have areas, research areas um, from urban green technology, smart nation initiatives, AI, agri-tech and ag aquaculture, all of these are upcoming topics right now that we're focusing on in Singapore. We also have a commercialization arm called Accelerate, which um, focuses on forming strategic partnerships with industry, licensing of patented technology that has come out of ASTAR Institutes and uh, co-developing products with um, industry partners, both, well, um, both in the public and private sector. So I did my PhD in material science um, at the University of Oxford in UK, and that was actually sponsored by the ASTAR Graduate Academy. So we do have um, many opportunities for scholarships and research attachments for students, um, which is meant to feed into the talent pipeline for Singapore and the region. So coming back to the research institutes and the research areas that we're working on, you can see over here um, about 30 odd institutes um, and, we, and we work on almost any topic that you can think of. So the Institute of Materials Research and Engineering falls under the SERC Science and Engineering Research Council. And these are the many research areas that we work on. So we've got 
agri-tech, food, consumer care, uh, energy, engineering, transport, healthcare, semiconductors. Personally, I am based in the advanced characterization and instrumentation department. So we do a lot of analytical characterization services for the industry. Um, and a lot of my background is to do with semiconductors as well. I uh, am trained as a microscopist and we'll get to that in a bit. So in the um, in my department, we do have certain um, groups focusing on advanced research on nanometrology, droplet physics, in situ microscopy, as well as a comprehensive characterization platform for um, probing micro uh, physical properties, chemical properties, stuff like what you've just seen in the previous presentation, the um, advanced equipment that we work with. And all of this is meant to develop new or improved materials and characterization techniques to support the research and development needs um, in the nation. And we also translate, we hope to translate these research outcomes into prototypes for application demonstrations and test bit evaluations. So that brings me to a very brief video um, to try and replicate a lab tour as if you were in Singapore. So let's get to that. Well, that video um, gave you some examples and insight into the microscopy facilities that I work with at IMRI and the kind of analysis that we support both in-house projects and uh, industry partners and customers. Um, it's not as detailed as the previous presentation because um, obviously I'm not in the lab right now, uh, but I'm happy to take any questions if there are. Yeah, thank you very much, Janaki. That's fantastic. Um, I mean, one of the things about uh, the research institutes at Singapore uh, is that they're, you know, they're really well funded. They've got some uh, fantastic equipment in there. Um, I mean, sort of your day to day job, what sort of equipment are you personally working on when you go in in the morning and, and come away at night? What sort of what sort of equipment have you been working on? Right. So as I've, as I've uh, shown, the vibration sensitive equipment, um, I work with the dual beam, F-I-B-S-E-M. So that's used for sample preparation yeah. um, for the transmission electron microscope, uh, microscopy, and, and then obviously the TEMs as well. Um, that's my major work scope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and are you doing your own research um, or are you also doing work for others? In other words, 
collaborators and people coming along with samples that you're having to prepare and, and sort of give advice about? Right, yes, it's a bit of both. Uh, so I am involved in a couple of uh, projects in the Institute. Um, some of them are involved, uh, some of them do involve microscopy. And there's one where I'm branching out a little bit and I'm working on um, AFM, atomic force microscopy, but not the experimentation itself. But I'm using the data to work on, um, well, I'm, I'm using machine learning techniques to try and extract more insights from the data. So we have uh, a team working on collecting um, experimental data from different surfaces using the AFM technique. And that's something that we've uh, developed and modified in-house. So we have access to uh, big you know, folders of data, um, many, many gigabytes of data. And it's impossible for someone to sit there and go through every single file. So what we hope to do there is to use um, the help of machines, you know, AI and machine learning techniques to automate certain processes and make, you know, get the machine to learn how a good surface looks like or a bad surface looks like. And that would make our job much, much easier yeah. going forward. Yeah. And the other great thing about Singapore is that there are a number of institutes uh, focusing on specific research areas, as you showed yes. um, right yes. at the beginning, um, like the Data Storage Institute and uh, I believe Institute of High Performance Computing and so on. Um, yes. Do you actually interact with people in those institutes as well, or are you very much focused on just within Emory? It really depends. So we have collaborative projects and, um, for example, industry collaborations where they need expertise from various institutes and a lot of it is complementary but we do have access to certain facilities and characterization techniques that others do not um, or even say Imri has the experimental expertise uh, but we might have to get the you know some help from IHPC the high performance computing because they do modeling simulations um, so it's, it's, it's really a very collaborative environment and yeah, we, we definitely work together, hmm. it, it, not just within ASTAR, but with the Institutes of Higher Learning as well. So you've got NUS, NTU, um, and collaborators from all around the world. Yeah. Exactly, because obviously we traditionally over here in the UK think about universities, like the National University of Singapore, uh, as being where the research is done. But Singapore mm -hmm. is a little different because it has these specific research institutes, uh, a little bit like Max Planck institutes that you also see in right. Germany. Um, yes. So they're very focused on the research as opposed to also the teaching, which you tend to get in universities. Um, and I think you just mentioned as well um, industry and interacting mm -hmm. with industry in Singapore. So do you have much interaction with industry uh, and, and people manufacturing things commercially and helping them with that? Uh, yes. So in my uh, analytical service team itself, we do have um, industry partners. So we've got SMEs, um, local SMEs, MNCs coming in with problem statements that they need help solving. So it could be a routine analysis job, or it could be a, um, a research collaboration point of view where they want to try something and traditional techniques don't work. So we get together and put something, you know, have certain trials, experimental trials, and we work towards a solution that would benefit them. Um, also, um, I, I remember so in some of our sister institutes like um, ARTC or SimTech, where they focus on um, various aspects of manufacturing or process evaluation, um, there is a lot of um, engagement with industry. Yes. Hmm. And I think, um, you know, people watching this that are at school may not understand mm -hmm. uh, as a researcher, as a scientist working in a lab like this, you know, one of the key things is disseminating your results where you can talk about the, the things that you've discovered. Um, obviously, if it's something you're doing with industry, it might be commercially sensitive. So you wouldn't want to yes. tell everybody about it. But as a researcher, you also are expected to write papers and go to <laughs> conferences. Um, tell us a little bit about that in your work. I mean, have you obviously with the pandemic is a bit difficult to travel now, but you know, what's it like, you know, traveling well, the, and, and talking about your work? Well, the good thing is we've got virtual meetings and conferences well like the one that you've mm. organized now um i remember at the peak of the 
pandemic situation. So in April, I, I submitted a, an abstract for a conference and I was due to travel, but then, you know, country shut down, so I couldn't. And then the conference was canceled and then they revived it in a virtual conference, but then the poster session kind of just you know, died off. Um, but things are coming back um, into play. So we do have virtual se sharing sessions like this one. Um, we do host virtual lab tours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and in terms of dissemination of research um, results and such things, I'm, well, I have to say the traditional journal paper still is pretty strong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Publishing in a journal is still going strong. Um, but we've definitely got far um, more avenues right now. Mm -hmm. So for the school students that may not realize, you know, when they're writing up their experiment that they've done in their their homework book, et cetera, um, you know, that's really good practice as a scientist, because what you have to do when you're doing real research is is write it up as we call it a paper and we submit it to a journal, which is like a magazine, really, where other people can read it. And it gets what we term peer reviewed, which means other people, uh, you know, who work in the same field, have a look at what's been written and see if it makes sense and see if it's if it's valid science. So and so that's something that you're doing in your day job as well uh, with some of yes. your work you're writing writing up your results. Uh, yes, of sharing. course the industry um, partnerships are they do involve sensitive information so we can't do much with that but when it comes down to the specific techniques um, that can be published we also can um, file patents if appropriate, or you could have technology disclosures, which talk about um, a certain method of doing things, yeah. right? If you've come up with it, then all of this, it just um, increases the knowledge database Absolutely. that we have within the organization itself. Yeah, no, really fascinating. And, um, you know, even if you're doing the, the work for a company, it's still really important to communicate those results, obviously, secretly to the company, but you still have to write them up. Uh, so it's a really good skill to have. Uh, as a scientist, you still need to be able to write clearly, set out your arguments and show your results. Um, On that note, uh, sorry, just one yeah. other thing. So we do um, come up with reports for all the analysis that we do for the industry partners. And this is important, as you said, because it's not just to record what you've done, but it's also to attach the right interpretation of the results, because you might see it one way, but someone who's not an expert needs some guidance and help. So all yeah. of this writing it down um, helps in that manner. Yeah, absolutely. No, fantastic. Well, I haven't seen any questions from the audience, but uh, thank you ever so much for joining us and also to Cedric as well for uh, helping put this together. I know he's there in the background. Uh, it's really good to see you over in Singapore. Have a really good evening. Thanks again for your time and you. uh, lovely to see you. You take care. You too, thanks.